All right, uh, guys, okay, you come on stage first uh, and then we'll, we'll get the names. So we have Gedger, we have uh, Lucian Samolowski, co-founder of Doc Planner. A big applause also for Lucian, thanks. All right. All right. Appreciating our, our speakers uh, and uh, uh, Mikael, uh, help me, Sav Savuskan. Savuskan, okay, uh, Lingua Leo. Very good, and we have another guest coming probably. She, she got an interview or something like that. Okay, let's start, I would say, um, again, short presentation and then we, we start to, to, um, to pitch. If uh, our lady was here, she could start, but <laughs> in this way, okay. If you want to start, it's okay. Just, you know, uh, an intro, if you have slides, perfect. Show it to us so we get an idea we are on the same page with uh, exactly what Doc Planner is doing. Okay, super cool. So, hi everybody, hello. Uh, my name is Lutek and I'm a co-founder at Doc Planner. And uh, I also lead a couple of teams. I lead an HR team, a customer development team, and two other teams that are uh, responsible for entering new countries. And basically what we do is we bring patients to doctors. And when we started, we had this kind of dream, a magical idea that we thought we would realize. So we were thinking about getting rid of all those waiting rooms, which are very often pretty crowded, sometimes stinky, but you have your own experiences with that, and switch them into an online calendar that you can use and fill, not leaving your home and drinking your coffee. And it looks like it's working. We have three million uh, patients that are visiting our websites every month. And as you can see, it's growing like hell. And we also are able to convert that traffic into online bookings. So we just hit our record of 10,000 bookings per month. As, and as you can see, the trend is pretty cool. I think what is also pretty cool is that we had the chance and lucky to uh, find a way to enter new countries. So these are one of the first ones that we entered with Poland and Czech Republic being our home markets. So we could make all the mistakes possible there and learn from them. And at the moment, we have our website in 23 countries. So the slides were too small to put all of them okay. there. <laughs> now, the question is, why is it at all working? And here is why. Uh, first of all, patients want to find the best doctor uh, in their neighborhood. And what they want to do is they want to book a visit with that doctor. Now, but it's not so easy as it seems, because first of all, the patient doesn't know which one is the best doctor to go to. And secondly, he needs to call the reception or the doctor, check his availability, and only then make an appointment. Doctors also have an issue. Uh, many of them want more patients. And they try to do that by spending money on advertisements that very often don't work. So here we are. Doc Planner, we give patients to doctors and the other way around. And I think one thing to mention uh, is we were able to grow and expand so quickly, not only because of an idea and its execution, but also a great team that is behind that. It's 100 people working really hard. So we wouldn't be there if it wasn't oh. for them. And a great tribute to them uh, from here. Oh. Thank you very much, that's it. Thanks, thanks Lucian. And in the meantime, our latest guest, busy for interviews. Uh, a round of applause also for uh, Elena uh, Flanagan Easter, CEO of Deposit Photos, right? Should we give to Elena the pleasure for, oh, all right. That's my turn. I think I have a nicer picture there, right? <laughs> <laughs> so hi everybody, my name is uh, Elena Flanagan Eister and I am a CEO of Deposit Photos. Deposit Photos, it's the fastest growing micro stock uh, in the world at this point. And just to give you a quick idea, uh, that's our beautiful product, as you can see. Um, so Deposit Photos, founded in the year of 2009, right now has uh, more than 130 employees and uh, headquarters is in New York, but research and development is here in Kiev, Ukraine. That's why we're really lucky and really happy to be here and really inspired uh, to be at this stage. Um, as I said, founded in 2009, Deposit Photos um, have 100 employees. It, um, 
both bootstrapped at the very beginning. We raised Series A uh, in the year of 2011 from TMT Investments. Thank you very much, TMT Investments. They're already here supporting us, uh, at, you know, sitting at the audience. And um, so what do we actually do? So uh, Deposit Photos, it's a huge online marketplace for images, illustration, and vector art. And what do we actually do? We sell digital assets to web designers, to marketing agencies uh, around the globe. Um, so just to give you a quick idea, if you were a photographer, you come to the platform, you upload images, right? And one designer wants to buy an image to build a website. He makes a purchase, you as a photographer get royalty, and us as a platform uh, get, get the percentage, usually at 40 to 60% um, share. Um, here a nice uh, chat of the chart of the world online imagery market uh, in billion, billion, it's, uh, so it was, uh, four billion dollars uh, in the year 2011 and it's going to be six in the year 2016 and we're planning to really take um, a big cut of it. Um, so uh, here you can see Microstock Diaries, you, you guys are in tech so you all know TechCrunch. So Microstock Diaries is something like TechCrunch but for Microstocks. And um, so far we're taking, uh, we're taking a third position, being a fairly young company, every, uh, like Shutterstock. Uh, right now this company is worth $2.5 billion, publicly traded, and uh, 10 years old. Fatolia, um, big company, and then us. So um, we're very excited, very proud. Uh, here you can see the, the content library growth we started with obviously with zero, and right now we have more than 17 million digital assets uh, under our management. So um, it's more, um, I would say it's, um, just to give you an idea, Shutterstock has 28. They've been in the business for 10 years, and we have 17, and we've done it for a little bit over than three years. So we really, really uh, like to move fast. Uh, customer base growth, contributor base growth, so charts are going up, enjoying this. And then, um, at some point, when we entered the industry, we realized that we're growing really fast, everything is working well, but, um, and there is a competition ahead of it, but we are in our heart, I guess. We want just uh, another microstock in the industry. We felt like disruptors, we wanted to innovate the space. And what we actually have done, um, we looked at the charts, we looked at the, smartphone usage, uh, unit shipped, uh, shipped. We looked at the um, quality of images that actually has been uh, produced by smartphones. And we realized that the future of micro stocks, actually, the future of the industry we are at, goes in a completely different direction. So what we've done, We've built it a new mobile application that actually allows every smartphone user to sell images you take with your iPhone. And uh, this is a completely different, it's a new generation of Microstock. So right now, all of you guys, you have your smartphone, you can download the application and start selling pictures right away. So um, it's gonna happen within the next two years. We're all gonna wear Google glasses. We're all gonna um, use completely different devices and DSLR camera will long time gone. And all content that's being generated right now, especially for in the Microsoft industry, would be generated with smart devices. Um, and uh, we hope that would be us. So, and I would like to, uh, would like to show you a little video. Unfortunately, uh, for the technical reasons, uh, I couldn't play it myself, but I have a lovely guy who's gonna help me out to do so. And we need the sound too. Is there any sound? Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're there. Could we do it again? Could we start it all over? Your phone pictures worldwide. Yep. Just your Sound up. Pick with one share. Nonsense. An everyday pick someone bought for an art project at Clash Shot. You can shoot or upload from album. Like, share, comment, and sell your phone pictures worldwide. Clash Shot. Available on App Store and Google Play. Thank you very cool. much. Thanks, Elena. It's very cool. So basically, I go out, I take my pictures, and sell. Yep. yep. Yeah, super interesting. OK, Michael, it's uh, your turn. And then we get Ilya, and then we start to have a chat. All right? Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Sevuskan. I'm the CEO of Lingualeo, 
who most of you probably heard of and many of you hopefully are using. So who is Lingualeo? We teach English. Uh, we don't just teach English, we, yeah. We're striving to become uh, what we call a language supermarket where you can get in, get off the shelf whatever you like and get out in a fast and easy way. Our mission is to bring new opportunities to people through new languages. Uh, our market this year is expected to hit $1.7 billion. That's uh, digital English language. And by 2016, it's supposed to grow to $2.6 billion. The problem that we are solving is pretty common and you likely know it. Everyone here, but one way or another, learned a foreign language, or at least tried to. And learning a foreign language, it's as difficult and uh, as going to a dentist. It's hard, boring, expensive, and painful. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to make this experience as fun as possible. We added gamification uh, to the experience. Uh, we added uh, fun in the sense that you now can take any content that you like. You can take your favorite movie, you can take your favorite book, a song, and you can use it as an instrument to, to learn English language. And if you cannot find something among hundreds of thousands of pieces of different content on our uh, site, you can always add your own. And we made it social. Uh, you can create your own group called Pride, where you can uh, connect to people you like, you can communicate with them, you can share, you can help each other out learning. Uh, we use a freemium business model, so a lot of our stuff is available for free. And uh, of course, we're trying to push you into a premium model. That's where we make money. But even if uh, you, you, we, we're success, successful, uh, it's really inexpensive. It's only $30 a year. Uh, not much to talk about. Uh, we started in 2009 in, Th in Thailand, where our founder took a group of uh, our developers for six months, and they came back uh, to Moscow with product in early 2010. And uh, in 2012, we already had the first million of users. Uh, last September, a uh, month ago, we crossed a five million user threshold. And uh, in 2012, also Runa Capital was naive enough to invest $3 million into us. Uh, so this year, we started our global expansion. As you, as you know, they always say you need to start small. So we started small. Uh, we entered a small Latin American country called Brazil that some of you may heard of. And uh, in the first seven months since we did that, we have 300,000 registered users there. Uh, now we have the site translated into the Ukrainian and Turkish languages. And I'm in Kiev. I'm happy to announce that Ukrainian actually will be the next user interface language within the next few months. We have a lot of demand for it. Uh, we are growing by leaps and bounds, uh, adding about 14,000 users daily, and adding uh, 2 million users since last June. Uh, revenue also is going up. We're hoping to break even this month, and next month we are planning to show the first profit. Uh, our platform is built so now we're working on localization and making it easy to translate it into other languages and also to add new languages to it as target languages. Uh, we are in educational stories, so it's very easy for us to work with other companies, including large partners who are very interested in marketing opportunities that we bring them. Plus, it's good for their karma. Uh, and we have a huge market because, as you know, languages are everywhere in every sphere of human life. You need a foreign language in one way or another. We are a multi-platform, web, every mobile platform there is is covered with our apps. And uh, we also have plugins to every browser out there. Our team today is 60 people strong. We have experienced manager, most of which came on board in the last six months. And uh, in the future, we want to expand to other markets. We want to add new user interface languages. You can see uh, that India is also in our 
uh, site. Uh, India, obviously, you know, has English as a, an official language, but only 5% of Indians actually know the English language. So it's a billion uh, people country that needs to speak English and doesn't. Hmm. Uh, also, new target languages are uh, our goal in the future. We want to increase our product offering. We're working on a new group version that will allow schools, universities, and corporate corporations to use our platform to teach uh, their curriculum to their students or to their employees. And we also are working on an instrument that will allow anybody who wants to create their own course and use it and share it with uh, our community to upload it, to design it and upload it on our site and either do it for free or actually make money on it selling it. Uh, also, we want to work on the online life education, providing our platform to teachers and schools who want to use uh, technologies like video lessons and phone lessons and any other technological developments there are in order to reach their audience. Uh, and we are looking for partners. We're looking for partners on different markets, partners who uh, may have access to local marketing channels, who have um, uh, knowledge and experience who will be able to take our product and to bring it to, to the audience in these particular countries. And we're also looking for smart investors to achieve the same goals. People who would be able to bring us the, not only the money, but experience and connections in different markets uh, to, to take us to these markets. So to sum up, Lingualio is fun, it's affordable, it is fast growing. Thank you. Thanks, Michael. Very interesting. And Ilya, just to close, so if there are partners in the hall, then you can reach out, obviously, Michael, because it could be interesting. Please. All right. By the way, I think it's very interesting the fact that, uh, you know, we have... Can, can I ask a big applause? Because they are proving that it's possible to do something starting from this part of the war, seriously, just a warm applause, because it's, it's, it's possible, it's just possible, you know? So, we heard a lot of speakers uh, during these two days, but maybe they start from, you know, Silicon Valley, big investors, everything is much easier on, on one side. It's never easy to create a great company. So, please, Ilya. Sure. So, thank you, yes. I'll try to be very short, right? So, uh, we're a company called Gejar. And uh, we're best known for uh, building a first app store on the planet, uh, for which we were given a World Economic Forum in Davos a nomination as technology pioneer. Uh, we launched our app store uh, two years before uh, Apple did. Uh, so currently we're in offices, uh, we're coming from Lithuania, uh, I personally coming, so I founded the company in Lithuania 2006. And currently we're in offices in Silicon Valley, uh, Redmond, uh, London, Vilnius, and St. Petersburg, which we launched this year only. So currently we work with uh, 550,000 developers, uh, distribute approximately 850,000 apps, uh, have 30 million monthly active uh, users on our platform, have raised uh, $42 million from investors uh, Axel and Tiger, uh, uh, do 100 million downloads a month, uh, have 200 million total uh, user base cumulative over the years, and uh, have just celebrated 3.5 billion downloads. So these are like high level marketing numbers. And uh, uh, last year, 18 months ago, we launched our newest product, Virtual Currency. So basically, this is a monetization solution for Android developers. And uh, this is currently has grown to 200 million users. And uh, yeah, I see the growth path is uh, pretty cool. And uh, uh, basically, uh, uh, we very often ask how we make money. So uh, basically, our business model is very similar to Google AdSense, where you know websites bid for placement in Google search engine and pay for click. So in our business model, uh, uh, developers, and you see just a couple of them, like Expedia, Amazon, uh, Zynga, Badoo, DNA, Netch, and you know, tons of them, really pay us uh, for the application distribution. And every time a user downloads an application, we get money uh, from those guys. Uh, and we reward the user in exchange for downloading through us the Fiat virtual currency. And on the back side, we provide developers uh, uh, with a, a SDK that allows you to take that money uh, for your in-application purchases. So that's 
pretty much it, but more questions are coming. Right, so, thank sure. You. Thanks. Thanks, Celia. Uh, I, I would like to, to start off immediately, uh, starting with Elena. Um, we were talking before in the backstage, uh, uh, would be good to go uh, s immediately global, so start global from day one, or is maybe easier to start in your local market, become the number one in your market, and then expand? What was your experience about that? Well, I really think that you need to think first what kind of problem are you solving and what's your business model and um, what is your product and who do you plan to sell it to? Because, well, there are very specific niches. Sometimes you want to sell, um, well, let's say um, a shampoo to, like, yeah. to moms, right? And you want to sell it to do it well, you have to pick a specific shampoo, a specific group of like, moms you want to share it to, like, like Kupi Vip in, uh, in Russia or something like that, right? So, um, but for us, we really thought global from the day one. Okay. So we're looking for the product that would actually has a global potential. Okay. And the market as well. You have to look at the market, you have to look at the product first. Perfect. So, but you started in U Ukraine, right? Or, or not? So yeah. Where, where so do you start from in the beginning? Yeah, uh, here in Kiev, in okay, Ukraine. Okay, yeah. here in Kiev, but immediately with the mindset My, of a global. What matters really, it's a mindset. Okay. Market, product, and mindset. Perfect. All right, Lucian, what, what, what's your take on it? Yeah. So actually, it is very tempting to start locally because, like we said, it's easy to test the product and you know the market because it's yours. And um, yeah, so there are all those tempting things. And then when you do, you start realizing that you already have the product and you already started monetization and you become even more addicted. Okay. So, you know, thinking global from day one is the least that you should do, actually. Yeah? The ideal scenario is to think of a product immediately as a global one and fine tune it. Uh, and when you're ready with it and hopefully do, do lucky with jump. some yeah, resources to do that, then you just launch and go. Yeah, Michael, what was the approach of Linguale on this? Well, the approach was to start local. Okay. Uh, but with a global picture in mind. I mean, we always wanted a global product, but our product is a B2C product, and a B2C product always mindset and the market preferences are different from a market to market. So um, in our case, you couldn't just take a product and take it anywhere immediately. So we had to select where to go. We need to look, we need to look at the partners because for us it's very important to open up the marketing channels uh, to get the information about our product to the consumers, target consumers. Okay. Uh, so, and, and plus in our case, localization is a key. You cannot just take it, translate it and throw it out in the open and hope that it will be picked up. Uh, we have to work on the process of localizing. We have to development has to, has to take uh, into account that it needs to be localized whenever the new feature is released. So it's a whole number of processes that we need to think about before we enter a new market. Right, but you started local with a global mindset. Okay? Global, mi global mindset always, because without a global mi mindset, Will I don't think it makes to sense to start numbers. period. Ilya, what, what was your uh, approach from day one? Yes, so uh, one small advantage we have a small country like Lithuania, which is only 3 million people, is you simply cannot afford a local approach from day one because that would never sustain a company. Okay. Right? So we were forced, for example, to start the whole service in English because, again, we would never have enough users or traffic or developers in Lithuania. And I think it has helped the company in many ways because we bypassed by doing global from day one uh, many companies in markets like Russia or Ukraine or Germany that were big enough to sustain local players. So as you were saying, some of them were got stuck in the local market where you know, we probably took a greater risk, but we uh, apparently got a greater reward. And did you start with uh, a bunch of money, a lot of money, a lot of investment or not? Well, uh, if I was given a second chance now, I would, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not. But uh, I graduated from Vilnius Economic uh, University studying banks and finances. I had no clue, never was told what VC stands for. So I had no clue money was available. <laughs> and that meant that uh, you know, essentially we had to bootstrap the company. It has pluses and minuses. Overall, I think it has more minuses. Uh, pluses, apparently, you maintain some you know, much larger equity than you otherwise would. But the minuses are, uh, you cannot focus. As, as, as my colleagues were saying, basically, you have to do 10 things at a time, like consult a local government agency to do some website, database, whatever, right. just to get the money to pay the salaries. So you cannot focus, and you move slow. 
And uh, we were lucky like that uh, between 2006 and 2007, two years. Uh, basically, uh, there was nobody else doing uh, app stores. Had iPhone launched 2006, not 2007, probably we would never have a chance. Okay. Michael, ju just a quick uh, shot on this. Like, uh, I mean, if you started with funding or not, because this was a topic of the two days. Uh, do you have to start uh, with a lot of money? To, uh, is it fundamental I can start from scratch, yes or no? Well, we started from scratch, but ideally, of course, it starts with a lot of money. Okay. Why not? Sure. If, if you can if, ha if, have if, it, it's better, you yeah, say. Yeah, if you can find a sucker who'll give it to you. Go, go for it. Lucian? Yeah, well, each story is different, but <laughs> I would say uh, starting with a lot of money has a lot of benefits, but it also has some problems. Because uh, we initially, when we thought that we would just start financing ourselves from the income and just growing organically, being independent and also focusing on the product. Um, so when we got the first uh, round of financing that was actually offered to us, the first thing was, okay, so what are we going to do with that money? So it's better not to have problems like that to the stage where you actually really know the mechanics and have the product right. And when you are at the stage where you can focus on execution, that's where real money is needed. And our advice from our experience would be when you do get to the stage when you know the product and, and, and you're sure about it and you tested it you know, multiple times, then go to really big and uh, serious investors because they don't only give you resources, they also give you a lot of network uh, and a lot of expertise, basically. So do well your homework and then when you want to scale, go to get the, the money. Exactly. Yeah, All right. exactly. Elena, well, what was your experience about that? Well, our experience, so, um, I, well, I really think that you never should ask for money when you don't need it. But you have to uh, kind of plan and build network so, um, and build relationship with investors, build relationship with um, strategically so when you need it, you know where to go to. But I think you always have to think like a grow hacker. You have to have it in your mind and know for sure that um, you should not. Like my advice would be ne don't never work with what you have and never ever take more than you know what to do with. So don't raise money until you know exactly what you're planning to um, spend it for. All right. Guys, if you want to engage in a conversation, just give me a hand and I'll come to you. I, I can't really see because I'm totally blind now with this slide, but uh, just, just give me a hand and I'll come, okay? As usually. Um, how about, uh, the, there was this topic uh, that I was curious to understand more, uh, that is, uh, in your experience, uh, in this uh, Central Eastern Europe, uh, are there specific uh, areas where you would recommend to start a company? Or whatever it is is good. Uh, I give you an example. In Italy, if I think, you know, made in Italy is a very strong uh, brand. You know, you have fashion, you have food, are topics where obviously the country is strong in it. So do you suggest any specific uh, vertical to start in or just you know follow your passion or solve the pro find the problem to solve uh, I start with Elena yeah well um, I really think that you have to have passion for what you're doing actually right. because you will fail one too many times and in order to actually get up and inspire yourself and inspire your team and inspire your customers you have to you know, have to have this engine that, you know, rides insi runs inside of you so you can actually build this energy, um, find this energy from. Okay, and so find something that you're passionate so, about. Something that you like, but oh. exactly be reasonable about it. So look around yourself and look at the, obviously, at the opportunities that, be always flexible. If you were born here uh, in Kiev, in Ukraine, and you have, well, I can, I can go hours about, you know, how actually, uh, if you were born here in Kiev in Ukraine, there's a specific problem that's actually is in a city and right now you know there are a few funds that actually are interested in investing, you have an ID, you can start doing it here, but however, it really comes down to who you are and what you really want to do. Do you want to help Kiev? Do you want to help Russia? Or do you want to solve problem on the local, uh, or global right. level? And, and follow the field where you want to exactly, play. Hi. Yeah. Your name? Hello, my name is Stanislav. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, one serious question. 
you are growing with all community of people. Uh, your uh, financial uh, is growing. And uh, what are you doing for uh, that people uh, with who you're growing? Uh, what you're doing for the nature? What you're doing for the life of people? Not in your service direct, uh, but in social uh, part of your life in maybe some help to uh, make water or mm -hmm. I, I understand what you mean. So in different what, what, countries or uh, plant the trees. How you uh, create... Give back to the... Yeah, uh, yeah. How you... Uh, pay back. Pay back and, yeah, and pay give... Pay back. Pay back for, yeah. uh, for this growing process, for this uh, very beautiful uh, results. <laughs> yeah, so and to give back basically to... To the community, That's I would an say. amazing question. Thank you very much for, for asking, because I ask this question myself every single day. So first of all, uh, I'm here right now, and I'm you know I'm um, I'm I'm happy to share and uh, answer all questions you might have, and I ho I hope that would be helpful at some point. Second of all, I think you have to start small. First of all, you have to um, you really have to be content yourself. Then you have to think about your team and about your company. My goal right now make 130 plus people who are in the company be happy, be fulfilled, be excited, be energized. So I think we're doing pretty, pretty good so far. And we're working with the customers. We're hoping that our, we get fantastic feedback. Our customers are happy. So the level of, you know, of yes. giving back to the community is already growing. When we've come to the certain stage, uh, when we feel like we need to give back even more, trust me, we'll do so. We'll create, um, like right now with the class shot, ID, it's not only to actually make money selling pictures with your iPhone. What we're trying to say, we're trying to say that your art, you know, pictures you take with your iPhone can be art and they're amazing. The quality is amazing. And I know for sure that those pictures can be sold. My friend, he's a journalist. He's right now uh, back in Syria, right? And he's, uh, he's filming uh, on the camera soldiers and dead bodies and whatnot. And he is my friend and I'm really, really deep in my heart. Yeah. I feel for him and I don't want him to, get, to be killed. So yeah, my passion so is to build an app. So if somebody is there, a soldier, whatnot, take this picture, show it to the world. And then, it. you know, we right. can save lives with that. Yeah, La, Lucian, uh, wh where would you start from? Wh 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 where do you suggest to start from? I mean, for, uh, for a company here in this uh, part of the world, where do you suggest to start from? Again, passion or specific sector? What's your take on it? Yeah, I think uh, the, the goal is not to give a number of ideas and then say, go do it. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the story, the, ha the way how it started with us is basically we, we were born in, in small cities or even villages and we came to Warsaw and we had teeth problems like everybody does when they eat too much sweets or you know, drink Coca-Cola. And so we were not able to find a doctor and that's how it started. And then we had a problem with managing projects in our team that was growing and we found Basecamp. So basically, I think the, the advice, I mean, there are a number of examples that I can give, but time is running. And so I think the advice that I can give, you have to be passionate about something, and I echo that, and you just have to find the need, a real need, not one that you have. It's a good step. Yeah? But all this stuff about beta testing and this kind of stuff is just to make sure that there are more people that have the same need. Yeah? Right. And the one idea that I can share, just not to be uh, totally general or generic, is I think there are not very many businesses. I know about a few that are very local, like in Edinburgh, for example, uh, that are somewhere near our area. So booking with a hairdresser or beauty saloons or this kind of stuff. Yeah? So I know that there will always be people who need something and you can always be a marketplace to provide that. Right. I will never book for an hairdresser anymore, but... What's your name? So, uh, I'm Ara, and uh, I have a question to Yelena. So, if you have uh, some, uh, uh, like, deposit photos, uh, so you know the program of Instagram. I'm a user of App Store, so Instagram is interesting for me, but I have never heard about deposit photos. So if you are uh, the same like Instagram, why are you not able to uh, have a, maybe a, a project uh, the same or 
to um, communicate with Instagram and have a one-on project. So what uh, is your unique? You, you're at Value Pro. Eleanor, sorry, one second. I take first uh, uh, Michael, and then you, you, while well, you think about the answer, but you already know. Uh, so I, I just want uh, to know also your, your take so that we finish our cut, and she's coming in a second. Thanks. My take on... Yeah, no, your question? take on, on what kind of suggest oh, oh, oh. We, you would give, what kind of topic, right. where do you start from? Well, as we're an educational story, for us, giving back really is easy. And one of the things that we are doing right now by when building the new group version is uh, having an opportunity in it to give free, uh, mm. free language lessons to kids that cannot afford it. Okay, okay. This one on, on, on that, uh, that topic. And where would you like to start from? Where would you suggest to start from uh, if someone has to start a company in this part of Well, I I'm, I'm totally agree with Lucas here because really you need to find the need. When you find the need and you feel that, oh my God, this is missing, how can it be missing? That's something you need to look into. Right. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, you look around and you see if really that's your particular need or if this need really exists. There is an empty niche. Right. Ilya, what, what's your tip? Thanks. Yes, so, uh, so having been an entrepreneur, this year I started to uh, also invest in the companies. So I, I started to take a more systematic approach to how you start a company, you know, what is a promising company. Apparently, the very first start thing you need to answer yourself is what exactly you're going to do. And funny enough, uh, you know, I have now a very different perspective as an investor uh, versus what I used to be an entrepreneur. So as an investor, basically, the starting point is saying, hey, which technologies actually are going to change our life dramatically? Not just a little bit, but like massively. Because only when an inflation point changes something dramatically, huge companies can build. So as an investor, you look, okay, you know, uh, 3D printing, that's becoming a part of our life. It's becoming yeah. fast. So apparently there will be companies that will benefit. What exactly on 3D printing is going to be built? You know, uh, new app stores for figures or something, new materials, uh, uh, new uh, digital stores for, I know, plastic figures or something else. So you ask yourself, like, you know, what are going to be the big things that are going to change your life dramatically because these are exactly the biggest possible opportunities. Mind reading. Uh, I don't know, I, I just love playing wow. with a mind reading device where you can okay. play a game actually just by thinking, you know, go left, go right. It's very primitive, but it's so easy to see that it will dramatically change your life in five years where keyboards no longer need it. Yeah. So in other words, you know, I would not invest no longer as a uh, Logitech for producing keyboards. You know, that's probably the last stage. So I think very important uh, is to uh, really ask yourself what are going to be not just needs, but like fundamental changes to our life. Like, okay. like that will change everybody's life. And uh, it's, it's actually pretty easy to see them. Right. And then next point, okay, if these technologies are changing our life, what exactly will be businesses around? Because these are the uh, points of highest possible ROI. Because the funny reality is uh, what I realize is building something built uh, big is uh, same difficult as building something small. Right. Because it's the same time of resources, same time of uh, basically um, work you need to do. So question, why do you build something small? It's one data point. Right. Elena, you want to take the, the, that point? So the, the point was basically uh, how are you different? What's your value proposition different by, for instance, Instagram? That is a super big player, of course. Yeah, I, I love this question, actually. Uh, so first of all, deposit photos, it's a core company. Deposit photo, it's a micro stock. But the application we actually built uh, called ClashShot. C-L-A-S-H-O-T, uh, clash out. And um, to say how is it different, it's, there is nothing like that anywhere in the world. And what we're actually trying to do, we're trying to, so it's not even solving a problem. We're just cre we're completely disrupting the way stuff has been done so far because we see the way it's going, it's going to develop. And what, so just think about it this way. You are generate tons of content, right? Every single day you take pictures of your family, you take pictures of your friends, right? And what can you do with it? What can you do with this content? You can obviously post it um, on Instagram and get like, okay, uh, okay, 15 likes, uh, 50 likes, however, right? So that's going to boost up your ego a little bit, okay? And then you can share it on Facebook, your friends are going to see it. So we're trying to create a third notion. We're trying to create a completely different platform that will allow you to actually get credit for your creativity. Because I know for sure, I've been working with designers, you know, uh, we've been selling content for four years, and I know they're looking for more... Um, 
original, more genuine content, and that's what every one of you is creating here. And every single, like your picture can tomorrow be a poster for a movie, or your picture can, you know, can, um, can be sold for uh, maybe for a banner advertising or whatnot. So if you really want to do that, you can actually do that. What, I'm, what we're trying to do that, the image you generate with your phone is actually, it's an art, right? And you can get credit not only in likes and in shares, you can actually get paid for it. And that's a fun process to participate into, I think. And it has, you know, a lot of social engagement involved as well. And we see potential of, like, for it growing and to be, like, actually um, a kind of a new uh, social yeah. So, uh, excuse me, Alain. So, it basically, is trying to disrupt and all industries, not yeah. only taking pictures. We have another question here. Your name, thanks. Thank you, Vasil, from Kiev. Uh, thank you, for, first of all, for your great examples. We really need such examples, especially here in Ukraine, to make a first step. And my question is, we are talking uh, a lot about passion to start and, of course, to continue to drive, to execute. So, uh, and my question is, if uh, big guys come and uh, would like to buy your, let's say, business, are you ready to sell uh, children Actually, your ch ch children, right? <laughs> like this, and uh, yeah. All right. Who wanna get this one? D do you know anyone who sold his child? <laughs> 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 like literally. I mean, uh, it's a tricky question actually, um, because, like I told you in the beginning, when we started, we wanted to be independent all the way through, and probably we would have stayed this way, but we would be very local. So there are some sacrifices to make if you want to say that you achieved something in your life. So it's like ambition versus having something that is your own forever. Yeah? And it's going to be yours forever. So I would say that um, it's a trade-off that you make really early on, not when the moment comes and you, know, you are asked the question. You really think about it when you make decisions you know, three or two years back. And I'm sure that there are businesses that, you know, stay with their owners and they love them. And personally, I, I love and I admire Apple. And I, I also love the fact that Steve Jobs hang around for so long and, and the company was successful for so long and they were able to pursue their own mission. Uh, so it is my dream to build my own Apple someday. Um, and I don't know if this one will be it or maybe something All next. Right. Michael, just, just quick, we have to close. Michael, would you sell your company, yes or no? <laughs> uh, well, really, it, it all depends. Uh, first of all, when you are taking an investment, you already give up a piece of your company, right? Right. So it's like selling a, what, a hand of your child? <laughs> a foot? I mean, it, it, it's, it really doesn't have a yes or no answer. It all depends. Conditions, price. Are you going to stay in charge of your business? Are you not going to? I mean, who's going to take over it? What's the, who is buying? It's one thing that somebody is buying who wants to keep the course, and the other thing is somebody is right. coming and saying, you know what? We're going to change everything. That's, it, there is no yes or no answer. So judge all the, the variables. Ilya? Well, I think before you start a company, you have to very honestly uh, ask yourself, is this uh, something I'm building to sell? And the reality is 90% of Silicon Valley startups are built to sell. Yeah. It's like building a house to sell to somebody else. Or is it something uh, that you build to leave it yourself in? So these are two fundamental different reasons. Yeah, and sorry, by the way, in the pitch deck, in the slide, the last slide usually is uh, a potential exit, you know? <laughs> Who will yes. sell the company? Yeah. So, so uh, there's a very different paths you choose for companies if you choose one of the other paths. Now, the other thing is, uh, my experience, people go into startups or businesses for two reasons, change the world, make money, right? Uh, now, when a colleague said, uh, changing the world can be done different ways. So you don't have to be in charge of your company to change the world. Right. Yeah, best example, Android. Andy Rubin builds Android, uh, uh, then sells it to Google, but not really to get the money. I mean, yes, it was a nice benefit, but Google gave all the resources to Andy Rubin to go and change the world. So right. selling is not necessarily giving up on your stuff, and right. that's one path. I and like uh, it. again, selling for money is another path. There are very different scenarios. I like it. Elena, and then we close. Yeah. Well, I, I completely agree. I think it's very, it's, it really depends where have you started, what's your product, but selling your company, it's not giving up on your company, right? Because I completely agree. If there, let's say, Google were to come and say, hey, let's work together, right? We'll offer all these resources, we might consider it. You know, it's really, 
um, it's a tough question to ask yourself because it's a lot involved into it. You know, really, what's your... Um, and again, like your life, it's, it's all about your own personal growth. When you feel like you overgrew your product, maybe you feel like you want to sell it. But if you feel like you're still contributing and you have a lot more to go, right? I think that's, that's, that's us right now. We really have like long, exciting journey. And why wouldn't you sell it then? So right. it really depends where, where you are and where you're going to. In which moment. Guys, yeah. we have to close. Well, it was really a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much. And uh, good luck for everything. Thank you. Thank you.